Hello and welcome to my Timera guide. In this guide I'm going to go over different builds for Timera as well as outline her strengths and weaknesses and her growths, so let's jump into it. Let's go over Timera's growth rates. Timera has 55% HP growth, 25% strength and magic, 45% dex and speed, 30% defense, res and luck, and 10% build growth. So looking at her growths, she definitely has mixed offense attributes. She has strength and magic both at 25%, with an emphasis on strength as per her base class. She also has really good decks, so that means she'll have decent crit chances as well as good accuracy. She has high speed, which means more avoid and more doubling. And she has pretty good defense, res, and luck, which means crit avoid as well as extra avoid from the luck. Res and defense allow her to tank a little bit better than other units and the build of 10% is not bad, and will give her one point of build stat per 10 level ups on fixed mode. She also has a pretty good passive, a Racket of Solm, inflict, inflicts crit minus five on foes within three spaces. So this can actually straight up remove crits from enemies with low crit rates, which definitely helps because crit rates can definitely kill your units out of the blue, uh, especially on like an Iron Man run. So if you want to avoid getting crits, she will help debuff enemies in this way. She also has generally good defensive stats, decent speed. She has kind of like lower strength, but it can be fixed easily. And there are builds you can run on her that can address her strength. Pros and cons of the unit. For pros, I would say with minimal effort, you can master seal her into Picket and leave Ike on her, and she will be a pretty solid bruiser that can tank. She's also fast enough to not get doubled by most enemies and her defensive stat and her res tend to be high enough that she doesn't take that much damage. So when Ike is popped on her, she is pretty durable and she can also counter attack on enemy phase with like a javelin and hit two range enemies that attack her, one and two range enemies and trigger sandstorm during enemy phase. So for low investment, she's a pretty good bruiser. Uh, for cons, she does have a high internal level. So it takes like one to two chapters before she, she starts leveling up normally again because she does start at level 18. And by the time you get her, enemies are around like level 15 or so. So she levels up slow for a chapter or two, but afterwards I would say, you know, she pops off and she starts leveling up normally. Uh, other pros, she can be a dive character that has high bulk. So if you run Brave Lance on her and you upgrade the Brave Lance as well as feed her your dex books, which I don't think are like a contested item, generally speaking, unless you're running a lot of crit builds, but you can feed her your dex books and she can just run around and sandstorm things with Brave Lance. And you, she can be a pretty consistent offense unit and a very consistent bruiser tank that also debuffs enemy crits, which is huge. She's also pretty durable. And even if you just want to use her just to single strike enemies and just not get doubled herself, you can throw her on like Silver Lance and she can just like poke things for damage while tanking and she'll still be relevant and viable. For level of investment, I would say it's quite low. All you have to do is leave Ike on her and just use a Master Seal. So you don't really have to overinvest in her. If you want to overinvest in her, she can become a damage carry easily. Otherwise, she'll just be a good enemy phase unit that can also poke on player phase for decent damage and in some cases double in one round. Now, if you use speed builds on her, like Speed Taker and Speed Plus 3 to Speed Plus 5, she can consistently double and her defense is, or I'm sorry, her offense is good enough that she usually will kill things. You might want to use an energy drop if you want her to not be making use of Sandstorm. However, if you want to be making use of Sandstorm, you want to go for Dex. So there's different ways to build her. But overall level of investment is low to medium. I would say it ever gets to be high because when you upgrade her to use a Brave Lance build, all you have to do is pay money and use a few point, like a few pieces of silver to upgrade the Brave Lance. And it's really not that time consuming to set up or difficult to set up. You just have to have the money for it essentially or the resources. So overall level of investment, I'd say low to medium. So what are Timera's best classes? I would say her absolute best class is Picket. It allows her to do one of two things. Either she is an enemy phase sandstorm tank that has high speed, high defense and good res and can counter attack enemies with a javelin and sandstorm or just put good damage on them while doubling on counter attack or she can attack on player phase and deal good damage while doubling or quadding and triggering sandstorm and in some cases she can just outright kill things without sandstorm 
but quadding with Brave Lance or doubling with Silver Lance are really viable. And even when she's an enemy phase build, she can still play her phase attack for good damage. So I would say Picket enables her to do something unique, which is be this like kind of bruiser unit that can trigger sandstorms on counterattacks or on player phase and reliably counterattack mages, archers, enemies that hit at two range, excluding axe enemies because those will break her. So I would say that's her main use case. She's also really good on a hero. This gives her decent growths and allows her to do chain assist or brave, like, you know, chain assist, brave assist, chain attack. So she can be good on hero. She can be good on halberdier. She can be good on warrior. These are general physical classes that most units can do okay on, but Picket, I would say, is better than those for sure. Uh, Sniper could be good because of her high dex growth, as well as the fact that Sniper gives crit plus 10 when you're hitting things that can't counterattack. So she could be a crit sniper, though I don't really recommend it, but it would be decent. Bow Knight, I would skip. She could be a Bow Knight and use Silver Lance and kind of be okay, but I don't think this is her best use case. General, I would skip. Great Knight has some potential because it gives her A rank in lances, and she could run Brave Lance. She could run a bunch of different things. She does lose Sandstorm, obviously. She would have allied defense, so she'd be more of like a physical tank, and she would still have good res and res growth. So Great Knight could potentially double, or at the very least avoid getting doubled, and double slow enemies. So this could be an option for her, but I, I don't really recommend it. Paladin actually is a solid option for her. So if you want something with more, just slightly more mobility and build, you could run this instead of Picket. It. It's still similarly tanky, and it has similar growths in terms of its tanking. It does lose Sandstorm, so if you're getting, you know, if you're going for big damage, it's probably going to be off of like a crit or like a heavily upgraded like silver weapon. Wyvern would be solid for her. This actually is a, a good option. I would say Picket's better, but Wyvern's a good option for her. The reason why I don't recommend Wyvern is because there are other units who excel in Wyvern, and she excels in Picket, so why put her on something else? Uh, I feel like having too many Wyverns can be annoying when there's like enemies with Elwind and Bows and Excalibur it can be quite stupid to deal with that. It's, it's much easier to have a few ground units that can pull those enemies and kill them so that you don't have to worry about getting one rounded by those things. So there are downsides to running too many wyverns. So for that reason, like you can make her a wyvern, but I'd say she's better off on picket. And the speed is similar. You do get one point of build and one move. Uh, you do lose some defense and you lose sandstorm, of course, which is actually a really good ability. Royal Knight, I would skip. Wolf Knight, I would skip. Too low of strength to be on Wolf Knight. She just loses a lot of damage, and she also loses Sandstorm. So, Griffin Knight, same reason. I don't think it would be the best thing for her. It would help her speed immensely, and you would need to fix her damage, and you could run her on this, but I feel like there's better Griffin and Wyverns to run, so I don't think she should be on it. Mages, they're just better magic units. She doesn't have the worst magic growth. 25% isn't horrible, plus Sage's 30%. You're looking at 55% magic growth. She doesn't have high magic stat though, so it's gonna take some work to get her magic up. So I just don't think it's worth it. Uh, so yeah, I'd say the main class she should be on at all times is Picket, and then secondary classes. Uh, you could throw her on Warrior, Hero, Halberdier, Sniper, Wyvern Knight, maybe Great Knight if you wanna try it out. Uh, Paladin, of those options, I would say Paladin is probably one of the better ones. Paladin and Wyvern Knight are good secondary options. Uh, Warrior just kind of feels like, you know, making the unit generic and throwing out her thing completely for no reason, so I don't really recommend it, but she would be good on it. Halberdier is kind of basically like worse picket, because you're throwing out some speed. You're also throwing out Sandstorm for pincer attack, and I don't think her strength is high enough to justify doing that. So I would say Picket is her absolute best class, and secondary classes should be like Wyvern Knight, uh, Paladin, maybe Sniper for a crit build. But there are better there are better units who excel in that, like you know, crit build on Alchrist, for example, is probably just better. So same thing with Warrior. There's better warriors, like Panette's a way better warrior. There are better halberdiers. And then Hero, it's it's not bad. It's just that it doesn't play into her strengths and it just throws out her unique identity. So yeah, definitely pick it. I would pick. Let's talk about passive skills Timera wants to get. So she joins your team with 1500 SP, which is a pretty good amount. So you can quickly get certain things on her. 
Now you have to keep in mind availability. So for example, if you wanted to get Cantor on her, which I actually don't recommend, you could get that as soon as you beat chapter 17, you can get Cantor on her. Uh, Lance power actually can be decent on her depending on the type of build, but honestly, like I've been, I tried it out on a run and there's better things for her for sure. Uh, other things that you could consider, strength increase, I don't recommend it though. Uh, speed, I do recommend. So I would say just going the speed route, so for example, I can get her speed plus four, I just need to get her Lin Bond up. Getting her speed plus four and eventually speed plus five is pretty huge. Speed plus four, definitely more affordable, but speed plus four allows her to double more consistently, which is good on all of her builds. And generally speed is better than build because if you're using a lighter weapon, the speed just adds to your avoid and your doubling potential. So definitely go for speed. Uh, Lunar Brace could be okay, but it's insanely expensive, so unless you get a ton of SP books from the well or the DLC, probably not going to be able to unlock that. Uh, Ike, defense actually isn't bad on her because Sandstorm damage triggers off of defense, but I would rather get Dex for the increased accuracy, the increased crit rate, and for the increased chance to trigger a Sandstorm, because generally her defense is quite good, so that could be an option. Uh, nothing on Makaya is really good, so Dex increase is good. I would say, honestly, Dex and Speed are pretty good. You could also run Speed and Dual Assist if you want, or Dex and Dual Assist if you're not going to go for doubling. So there's basically two ways to run her in terms of speed. You can go for doubling uh, aggressively, or you can just keep her speed as is and just not get doubled yourself while going for like Dual Assist or something. So then she's kind of like a bruiser. That helps. Uh, other things like Quality Time, Draconic Hex, I don't really recommend. I don't really see the point. I did use mentorship on her in this run. This was before the DLC well though, so I don't really know that I recommend it now because you can get more SP faster, so you might as well just save your SP. Uh, but it can be nice to level slightly faster. So this is the particular build I'm running. Ike with speed plus three, dex plus four. Now currently, I could go do a Lin battle. because I have enough fragments. It does, qu it does cost quite a lot. To get to speed plus four, you have to get to bond rank 16. So I'll just show that really quick while talking about other things she can run. Um, I, have, I basically never run Cantor on her. There's a reason for that, because if she's an enemy phase unit, she doesn't really need it because she can tank. So Cantor is really to get out of danger for the most part. It can be used to reposition, but I mostly use it to get out of danger. So I would rather her just have really good speed and really good decks if she's going to be an enemy phase tank because I know she's not going to need to move much because she can tank anything. She also has the crit avoid, which is nice. It helps her tank even more. So she has all these like specific things that make her good tank. All right, so now I get speed plus four. This helps her meet certain thresholds. So right now, if we look at her speed, let's see, let's go to Lin. This is this is the t like the defensive build. This is not the dive build. The dive build uses Sigurd and Brave Lance, and I can show that as well. All right, so here's her speed. Or let's, <laughs> all right, here's her speed. <laughs> Just put that randomly. Uh, so she is at 27 base, uh, effect plus four, weight minus three. Now this was before the well, after the well weapon, I would say you want to just run the well weapon and get it to plus three. And then if you want, you could throw an engraving on it, but that will not reduce her speed, or if it does, it's very little. She also has a steel lance to hit 30 speed, but 30 speed on chapter 21 is not bad. She's going to double most things. No one's going to double like the sword masters or the wolf knights, so she can rider's bane wolf knights and just poke sword masters. Uh, she also has, you know, access to these things on Ike. But this is her build. She also has access to Wrath, which is nice. So her dex, this all, her dex plus Wrath helps contributing to critting on a counterattack, as well as triggering Sandstorm. So both of those things work off of each other. All right, so that's that build and the passives. I'll show the other build now. Here is the other build that I've run. Uh, this Timera was a damage carry. I did use a speed wing on her, two to three dex books, and I think a Draco shield. But she runs Sigurd, you get it to bond level 20, and she gets plus three build from Sigurd. She gets more dex, and she also gets more defense. So this means that when she sandstorms, it hits harder. She's a very high chance to sandstorm, and nothing slows her down. Now, you don't have to run build plus four. You can run 
speed plus four instead. Uh, also, she has a Rider's Bane plus three to one-shot enemy Wolf Knights, and she has Brionac for poking at range, and she can also still tank on enemy phase. Now, the reason I don't run Cantor on her is because either she's going to get Cantor from a dive build running Sigurd, or she's not going to need it because she's going to be an enemy phase tank. And both of these builds are very strong. This build is absolutely insane because she has she still has really good defense. She has 35 defense right now and 20 res with 37 speed. Nothing is hitting her hard. Nothing is doubling her. So she's insanely durable and she can dive into groups of like two to three enemies, kill one of them, and then the other two aren't going to kill her. And oftentimes she'll counterattack them for big damage and sandstorm and kill them. So she's pretty nuts, honestly, when built correctly. And even when you just, you know, low investment enemy phase Ike build on her, she's still very viable. Uh, other things she could use, she could use Roy for an enemy phase build for holdout. She would gain some strength in that case. Um, you could run Erica on her. It reduces the damage she takes by three, which helps, and also gives her some armor penetration. So those are some options for her as well. But she's a very solid unit that can deal pretty big damage, and she does have access to S rank spears. So long term, if you when you get Brionac, you can run it, and it's pretty good actually. And look at these hit rates too. Like she's not missing <laughs> because her dex is so high, she doesn't miss. She almost never misses, and she usually has 100% hit rates, even on Swordmasters and fast enemies. And even with, like, Rider's Bane plus three, she has pretty high hit rates, pretty good damage. So, yeah, uh, that's it for Timera. Definitely one of the better endgame units with minimal investment. Easy A tier uh, when just used at a basic level, and I would say S tier when you make her this, like, combat build. Now, if you want to min-max her... Brave Lance build. If you run Sigurd engraving on the Brave Lance, it increases the damage while reducing the weight. That's one of the better things for it because she does kind of have build problems to some degree to run Brave Lance, but for other spears, she's not as bad. Like, it's not as bad for those weapons. Uh, Silver Lance can kind of be heavy for her, but if you run the new Well weapon, it's very light and has one point less damage than Silver, so she can just run that. And that can be an enemy phase build. If you get her on Brionac, though, like when, as soon as you get Brionac, this thing is like a super javelin. It hits very hard, and it's not that heavy. So it's actually very good. It's probably her best weapon for enemy phase tanking, to be honest. It just outclasses. It does have weight 16, so it's a little heavy. It's kind of like a spear, but it does have pretty good might, and this is without it being upgraded. So it's kind of it's kind of decent. It also has... Well, it does have some crit from the engraving, but it's a pretty solid weapon for a high build build. So yeah, that's it for this one. Definitely like and subscribe if you found this useful. Feel free to drop a comment as to how you run Timera, and I'll see you in the next one.